Welcome to another episode of the No Offense Podcast. Hey, we got a very special, special treat for you guys. For everybody that's tuning in today, we got the legendary, yes, the legendary Tila reigning up out of Memphis on the platform today. So I want to go ahead and thank everybody that's tuning in from east to west, down south, midwest, wherever you at, overseas, Canada, Spain, Denmark, it don't matter. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, make sure... Be sure to hit the five star rating and leave a good review. So let's go ahead and jump into this interview. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Hot shit. Hot shit. Here it goes. Who was the nigga in the beam with them things? Who was the nigga that leans on your brain? Who was the nigga with the quality ice on? Hollering out, fuck the price. I'm so tired. Whoa, this is on my dick. Can you see Cause it's too many bitches on my dick. What up, though? This your boy, D.O.C. We got a very, very special guest on the platform today. Actually, a legend reigning up out of Memphis. He goes by the name of Tila. How you doing today, sir? Doc, what's good, brother? How you doing, man? I'm great on this end, man. I'm great. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I can't complain at all, man. For real, for real. Every day that I get the opportunity to wake up and knock out some new goals, I'm super appreciative. Excellent. That's what we're doing. We keep rolling, man, you know? That's what we do. We get yeah. up another day to be better. Hopefully, that's, right. you know, that's the uh, collective consci- consciousness of the uh, the group here. To get up and do yeah. better shit day by day, man, one day at a time, making it better. Right, right. That's super real. That's super real. It took me a while to get to that space mentally to look at life that way so I wouldn't be wasting time. You know how days can turn into weeks, weeks can turn into months, and so on and so forth, you know. So it took a little while for me to get to that point, but I'm there trying to get there. Hey, man, but, you know, that's for all of us because even in that time where you would think that, or we, because not you per se, but I'm speaking for uh, myself as well, when you think you're being uh, stagnant, you know, it's even a lesson in that, you know, strangely. But but I know that feeling of like, man, I'm wasting time. I can get more done. You know, that part come with going through those times of not covering as much ground. However, you still, it was a lesson and a learning going on, you know, to observe that, to, you know, put that observation there. So, man, you know, uh, let's not beat ourselves up about that. And like you say, each day, man, you know, uh, that's what it's about, growth. You know, you can't right. you can say if we was equipped with that, then what fun would it be off top if you right. had all the, you know, the skill set? You know, if it right. ain't, you know, you just came in. But uh, the growth, man, I'm, I'm um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm loving that too as well. That's real. Well, I'm definitely glad to get the opportunity to do an interview with you and sit down and chop it up with you. On my platform, what I like to do, I like to get everybody's full story to get the opportunity to see what trials and tribulations, and not even from a negative connotation, but their trials and tribulations that they went through prior to rap, during the rap game, that have made them who they are today. But before we get into all that, I wanted to give you the opportunity to have the floor to let everybody know what you got going on especially with your resurgence coming back into the game you know where they can find you at ultimately just what's going on with you all right so uh for those that you know we need to get them followers up and i'm I'm saying this in a cool way not in a you know uh in in, in a uh you know a, a desperate way but a cool way get them followers up man uh at all social media platforms tila official tila official and I'm saying that because how we moving and in order to stay in line with what's dropping when it's coming and all that, man, you know, you're going to have to be plugged in 
on them Tila officials. Tila official at uh, IG, Tila official at uh, Facebook, Twitter. And that's because, once again, um, we're doing this independently, you know, and how we move in, you know, it's, it's, it's a structure there. But at the same time, too, we get to decide if we want to move the calendar up, if we want to, you know, uh, instead of waiting on this date, we're going to take it to this date. So plug in like that through all the Tila official platforms, man. IG, Tila official. Twitter, Word. Tila official. Facebook, Tila official. Yeah. And um, uh, and what we working on. So we working on a, a collective uh, body of things, man. I'm, I'm doing music. Uh, doing music with, with Jazzy, with uh, Elvis, with Drummer Boy reason of that too is because i wanted to really capture memphis with a collective group of producers even you know such as myself because i chime in a whole lot when it comes to that production to where we can really capture uh the energy of of that sound we grew up in and and bring it you know up to days uh sonically so it can be competitive and what i mean competitive is not you know i'm not competing but i definitely understand that you know it needs to be up to you know uh sonically to where people can uh ear translate so right. bringing it to that, that uh that happy place man so i had to go with those guys that really understand what it is that uh uh, I'm trying to do here, uh, and we, you know, we we didn't crunk up a a, a a few. I mean, so far is good, you know, so far so good, and that's once again that's the beauty of being uh, independent with this thing. Because if if the vibe is not excuse me, where it need to be, man, you know, we'll even switch it out to do something, you know, uh, totally different, and to give you that. Um, to give you that uh, concept sound, right? So it's got to be, you know, that's what it's got to be. That's kind of like where we left off in everybody's mind. Of course, I had uh, I uh, came out the peace of mind. Now, uh, now, never. Then we did world laden up. Then we did double dose, and then I threw out gators and soup. However, the core audience, man, they stuck on peace of mind, and I get it. Because peace of mind was and is, it's uh, like I said, it's a con yeah, it's a classic and it's a concept. It's a concept sound. If you notice, I didn't steer outside of the producers that I, I they were all right there. You know, I didn't go. Uh, what is it? You know, uh, soliciting for beats or anything like that. That was organic. Right. How we cooked it up. You know, outside of the T mix track. T-Mix is the only person on that album that I didn't really get um, intimate with, you know. And when I say intimate, I ain't got to put a pause on it. Y'all know what it is. It ain't like no, uh, uh, it ain't like no, um, no homosexual, uh, uh, which nothing towards gay, but I'm saying intimate in a music way. You feel me? Where if you are in there with your engineer producers, you know what I'm talking about. And me and Mix didn't do that, but everybody else on that album, that's what that was. That's why the sound is the way it is. You mm -hmm. know? So um, that's what this project has to be. It has to be that. And um, that could be lying into the hiatus where people will say, where you been? You know, a little bit of that, you know, um, when you do decide to to make your way independently, you know, you foot in the bill. And um, with that being said, you know, man, it's like to do it right. It still costs what it costs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, exactly. you know, yeah. we got to put the ones and twos together. I wasn't going to sell it short to sell the people short. Uh, now, it's not an excuse for me not being active. You know, uh, let's get that clear. Um I think, you know, Doc, and let's just open up and be, let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get real, man. 
Uh, if you want to know clearly what added to, and man, this is coming to me now, what added to not releasing certain things, and even now, man, a fear of failure. You know, now I I don't I don't I, don't, I didn't want to sign up for that shit and believe in that, but I mean maybe I need to face the truth. You know, because what yeah. I, I I found out. The worst thing to do is to stop. You don't yeah. necessarily have to, you know, um, it's still ways of doing projects and not having the big budgets. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but what tends to happen, they won't have a certain success and then you feel like you fail. And that'll mm. put you in a fearful place of not doing shit but yeah. that shouldn't be an excuse you don't do because yeah. what they tend to do is you get ring rust you know that's what I'm you know even dealing with in a certain in, in certain areas where I know I would be way more further advanced and um I got a little ring rust but the get the the, the, the beauty about me is a gift is there a gift has been given right so I'm just able yeah. to, I, I can just do it it's amazing to me. It's like, you know, to the degrees of where like, man, that's, that's something, something I found on this existence that I, I got it like that. Right. Uh, yeah. But I ain't got it like that, like that. You feel me? So you <laughs> shouldn't stop. <laughs> you shouldn't stop. So that, uh, you know, maybe um, the listener, uh, I, at this point, I, I'm loving it and trust me, believing it if it's just one. If it's one person, one listener that get that, you know, job done. We hit the target. You know, don't stop. Keep practicing. Keep shooting. Keep moving. Do not stop. All that other stuff that are, you know, line up to make you stop. It's a distraction. I see people mm. do it now. I see, I, I mean, in all genres. You can go yeah. to like, um, what was that thing like with, um, I think, uh, if I can recall, man, that was Monique. Some comedians talking about they ain't going to do no shit because Netflix ain't giving them a certain type of budget, you know, to do their, that yeah, shit. Monique. Yeah, yeah, see, what they do, though, you ain't doing your, your craft. You kind of, you know what I'm saying? Because you waiting on that check. And now you got paralysis of the check. And, and man, what tend to happen, that'll, it'll, it'll knock you off your square. It'll knock you out your position. So, so you, you got to keep sharpening your craft. You got to. You got to. I don't care who you are. So, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult for somebody to be, you know, uh, full on arena. With the with the the s- what shit four hundred and fifty thousand dollar production, and then mm. go back to playing, you know, um, shit. Let's call it like a a hole in the wall, you know, a juke joint, whatever you want to call it. They you know they still exist now because I have to go to them. Just because right. we see them clubs on Instagram with all them lights and all this shiny stuff. No, it's still some, man, some clubs right in people's backyards, right? Yeah. So what it tend to happen is you you don't know how to deal with that. You don't know how to, you know, go and function in that because no production ain't here, ain't no real check here, da 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 And then, okay, now you just, you know, crippled yourself. So... It's important to keep, you know, just keep, just keep doing it in all types of weather. Right. I can see that. I wonder for like a lack of better terms, could it cause like a, a insecurity or some of that nature where the person, you know, after being on that large of a stage and having to do quote unquote chitlin circuits and stuff like that, can that build an insecurity inside of an artist or with inside of yourself as an artist? Well, yeah, it can build an insecurity because of the fact that man, now that, you got so many people a part of your team and doing X, Y, Z's. And those X, those people that are there, they're there to buffer you too and to yes man you or yes woman you, right? 
So now mm-hmm. that they, you know, now you you're in that space, shit changes. You don't know how to function with them not being there, without telling you that now it's gonna work. Now you the shit. Now whatever you do, you know they own you, cause you 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 lose you. That's, it gets distorted, man. When uh you getting it like that, it'll get distorted. You'll think that shit real. You think yeah. all that hype and what they telling you. And how they feeding you. You'll think it's real. You'll think you the only one that's like that. Like, you know, ain't nobody, you know, fly to me. Ain't nobody drip, salt, whatever. You know, you start yeah. believing in that. You'll believe that, man. So, uh, wrong with, you know, celebrating when you reach that point. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's good yeah. to embrace all that. You work hard for that. You deserve that. You are royalty. You do, you know what I'm saying? But the thing of it is, don't get lost by that. You are, you're that without that. And that's, right. that's the part that, you know, it can get a little distorted. And so um, now you're trying to, you know, in, in which in any situation, I don't care who you are, you know, it's going double it's just the life, you know, it's the cycle, you know, it's, you know, it's in with the, the new, out with the old. So that's just the beauty, that's the cycle. So it's going to happen where you're going to have to, you know, go back to a certain um, uh, place. And if you don't know how to really deal with it, if you so, you, you're you uh, overdone in cosmetic to where man you can get to that place and you won't function you'll just sit there and be stagnated like you say you for real stagnate not like what we talked about earlier but for real you won't be doing yeah. nothing because you'll be like always oh, like no nah, it's got to be done right no nah, it's got to be done right and i a hey, i'm a big i'm a big supporter of it's got to be done right but i'm a bigger supporter of it's got to be done it's got to get done that's some real gems like, I would want to know, like, with peace of mind being so much of a classic, and you know how you said earlier that the fans hold on to it dear, did that album create any type of pressure on you as far as, like, when you go to make other albums after that, or even now, it's like a quota that you set to look at, like, if it's not right here, I can't put it out, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like, did it create any type of pressure for you? Does the first album put pressure on me? Now it might put a little bit of pressure on me, but the pressure that it put on me now is good. Strangely, I'm a different type. In the beginning, that shit didn't put no pressure on me, which it should have put pressure on me because the albums out there would have been better. But strangely, the first album, I shit it on the first album. Like when I did Now Never, when I did uh, uh, World Ain't Up Double, I, I shit it on peace of mind. I was like, oh man, this shit too slow. It's too, uh, it's too Southern. I was saying all types of shit about that album to myself. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And uh, it's because I wanted, to, here I am trying to do albums like, you know, more so like what Jay-Z was doing, what Puffy was doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and that you know after that and, and and you know shit it on where I was um based out of some fraud shit got real fake right there you know and that's yeah. because of the fact that you know I started feeding into if you ain't selling like this or you're not getting this quote unquote recognition. You know, because being uh, green to it, being lame to it, not, not understand, oh, it's a game. It's a game they're yeah. running. You know what I'm saying? So you get caught up. So I didn't know, oh, man, okay. Not saying, per se, talking negative on on, on somebody like Jay or, 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 or Puff, especially Jay, you know, and it's, it, I mean, you know, still to me, you know, it, he's like top rapper to me. But right. not not shitting on it, but understanding now, oh shit, that was fucking. They was doing analytical shit back then. They were fucking with your head back then. You know, it's more just no straight music shit going on. You know, right, there's a right. lot of it's a lot of dollars being pushed. You know, so I didn't know that. You know, so I'm just thinking like, 
oh man, that shit I did, it ain't nothing, you know, and not being appreciative of the people that love that peace of mind. So no, I didn't even have no pressures uh, uh, for the album, a uh, uh, peace of mind doing them, um, the albums after, you know, like Now and Never and all that. I had with Now and Never, the pressures that came with Now and Never was the transition from uh, Swall to Rap a lot. That right. was yeah. that pressure. You know, and uh, that was a it was a weird place uh, to be in because I built family with with Swab. I mean, I dearly love Tony. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And uh, and to have to go to rap a lot, and then too how I got to rap a lot when it wasn't like something that I, you know, uh, just said, oh, I wanna. I want to go to rap a lot. That wasn't what it was. It was more so when I met Jay. You know, Jay charming in his own way too. Right. You know, um, for for me, and and once again, there's some open stuff, man. See, Jay presented yeah. the father figure I'd never had. Right. Mm. So yeah. and then he presented too. He understood spirituality. Right. Or I should say. He understood definitely. He ain't, I'm sure he do, but he understood religion. Where I would, it, it had me, you know, that religion really was a thing on me, cause you know I come out of Memphis, you know, Bible Belt, you know, a uh, whole thing. So, but he he understood all that, right? So he it pro, it provided for me um, a protection. It provided mm. me a comfort in that sense, you know. However, I was still torn because I'm like, man, I really got a lot of love. I looked at Tony like a brother, you know. It, right. it, you know, they wasn't that kind of like it, this my like no dad. It just felt like this, like this my guy. This my this my brother, you know. Um, yeah. And and didn't know how to resolve that issue that we had. And then so um, here's Jay. Not on, you know, taking up a mentor role that, you know, all of that. Ro and so, uh, hey, let me take care of that. Let me, you know, let me work this out for you. Something that I, I never had. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And even though, because where I'm from, I had to hit the ground running. And, and if you didn't hit the ground running, I, you wouldn't fucking survive. You feel me? But it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't mean that you didn't need what you needed, you know what I'm saying? To, to you know, I had some powerful grandfathers, but they, I was disconnected because, you know, on one side, my mom, oh, you're not married. We come from that shit. You ain't married to, you know, your grandma, not my mom, my grandma didn't marry him. So you're connected, you're disconnected. Mm, you yeah, feel me? Yeah. Some my grandma yeah. did that now I can't get. You know, now and, and and then with the other side, which uh crazy, you know, um uh, that's my grandfather that uh we can get back to that if we need to. Daddy, uh first black center of uh, other uh first black president, first and foremost, of the sanitation department in Memphis. So this was during the time where King came out. The whole I am a man's uh, um, slogan, quote, phrase. That was my grandfather, right? Uh, now, mm. even though those things didn't produce a lot of uh, currency, but he was still a powerful uh, or, or, or a notable in the community, right? So right. once again... I'm I'm a lighter skinned, you know, and I ain't even light, but I'm a little lighter than my father, you know. So I'm still I'm a head scratcher right there, you know what I'm saying. So on the other yeah. side, your grandmother didn't marry this, you know, and on this side, you're the lighter one. What's you know? So it was always like I didn't get that, you know, that embrace meant you know uh to later on when shit i done found my way and made my own bone now now everybody wanted yeah yeah you know you feel me 
So right, right, once yeah. again, you know, so um so that made it uh that gave me a sense of security to a degree at, at at the lot. You know, now it's it is still tampered with the music because being as suave, I was in a comfortable uh, place. Even though motherfuckers, you might not like me, you know, because I come, I came, I just made like I come come with a different uh, a different flavor on me. It's always been that, you know, that uh, it's gonna be some hard bottoms close by. It's gonna be some silk, you know, laying, <laughs> you know, right there. It's gonna be some, you know, some imported, you know. Uh, skin over there because that's just that I don't know where that came from. That's always been there. I I, I gravitated quicker to shit Morris Day in the time than the Barcades. You feel right. me? Right. Yeah, yeah. It, because it's oh, you talking about some Stacy Adams? You talking about you know, bitch, you open up the glove compartment, put on the camisole. Hell yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I never, I didn't, I, you know, if you didn't hear the bar K, you know, they like, you know, sex and back, all that, all that freak little border. I just like, well, you know, reptiles and snakes. I'm like, whoa, what the hell, you know? I just, you know, I, I'm, so that's, that's kind of been there. So hate it or love it. You didn't like it. I still considered you, you know, family. You're my brother. So it's suave, you know. I, I had that uh that kind of uh I'm doing fam music with my family. And so the music right. gonna be better. With with uh rap a lot, I'm like, oh shit, I'm doing music, but um I'm feeling like not likening myself, but I'm feeling like um uh a Joseph. That at any time my brothers would throw me in a hole and sell me for some, you know what I'm saying, some silver, and I'd be put in slavery. Cause shit, Joe, you know, I'm only here because the old man said, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. So that's that, you know, that was that deal, you know. Uh and and mind you, like I said, yeah, strangely, with all that was my precious, but doing the albums, no. I, I should have had pressure on me uh, behind that peace of mind because it would have made, you know, it, that could have made the other albums better. But the pressure came from, you know, it just came from, I think, in more on how I'm going to live through this shit. How am I yeah. going to survive, you know, you know. I can only imagine because share around that time in 96, 97, mid-90s, it was a lot of crazy shit going on in hip-hop during that time. Even between like the East Coast, West Coast stuff, just in hip hop, right? You know, niggas getting their asses blowed off. You was getting bodied, you know. Yeah. Man, quick, you know, like what happened with Big, what happened with Pac, you know, what happened with Lafayette. Yeah, you can get, you'll get bodied quicker than from your your own company, your own label. You know what I'm saying? So right. you know, now they they got slicker ways of doing. Right. Uh, but yeah, now it was like it was obvious that oh shit, your label will have your ass killed. You and right. you know, <laughs> you know, that's still, yeah. So, Damn, that, that gotta be like a crazy situation to be in, you know, to wake up as an artist every day with that on the back of your mind or even on the front of your mind. And not saying necessarily your label or in your situation, but just period to know that, you know, labels back during that time will get you knocked off. Very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable, yeah. man, because um it, it's it's a it's a bittersweet man you, you're doing your thing you getting i mean all the perks you loving it but at the same time too yeah you you gotta you know you gotta deal with that part that's right i don't know um it's maybe like you know surfboarding in a you know in an ocean full of uh sharks because right. while you're on your way you man ain't no more like it but when you know when you wipe out your ass might get ate up or something, you know? So it's just kind of, yeah, it was one of those things. But you still thrive to get back on that, on catch you away, yeah. you know? So it's, yeah. I've heard of different artists uh, say that, like, they would get pressures from their record label or, you know, people that's in the studio or whatever with them to try to make them fit into what was going on. Like, with you coming out during that time with everything, like we was talking about with the East and West going on, and it was a lot of quote-unquote 
gangster rap influence and hip hop bubbling during that time. You know, you had your fashion thing more into like the player lane and all that stuff. Did did anybody ever try to push that type of stigma or style or, or want you to rap in that type of way? Yeah, you know, but I, I had dealt with that early on, so I was I was kind of out of that that place because I I dealt with that coming up through uh, my whole existence, right. you know, because Memphis. That's real. A, a small portion of Memphis is player, and then when it got hit, like you know, with the. Uh, when when crack came in and uh you know it changed the infrastructure so you had to be this is what they call the hard time you had to be hard right it's right. like nwa that all that it you know it, you know you gotta think uh, our biggest trap was called new compton so how <laughs> nwa influenced everything and, and along with crack so you everything you know you you had to be hard but so I had experienced that, you know, not like, look, that shit, you can, nigga, it ain't how you dress and what you listening to that make you hard. I understood, I, you know, so, yeah. I, but I had to prove it, of course. And I ain't got to just go into detail on how I proved it, but they got the message real quick and clear, like, oh, shit, oh, you can, oh, uh, yeah, you can put on a silk suit and, you know, get your hair done. And and oh, uh, you know, you ain't soft per se. You know what I'm saying? And, and right. it ain't what you riding to, listening to. You know, cause I was even then, I still have my. You know, I have some Prince in. I have some Womack and Womack. I have you know me some Michael in. Of course, Marvin. But Marvin was all through the M and all that. Uh, Hutch, you know, and Ruffin. Whatever it is that I like, you know, sonically, I even go deeper than that. I go Queen on you. So I'm riding around in my, you know, uh, was that that 80, 86 Cutlass, I mean, 86 Regal. That was my Regal when I had the Regal. And I'm playing Queen, you know? Mm. So they going to look at you like, what kind of nigga, you know, what kind of nigga is you, you know? But I had, so I was dealing with that then. Like, look, you know, this music, some of these young artists out here now, they get it. Some of they get it, and I like that. That it's not a lot of them, but I like that way they understand that man. It ain't what I'm listening to or what I'm doing that make me who I am. You know, right? You know, so uh, I got past that quick. So when I would get to when I was doing uh, my records in the way that I was doing it. I was hit with that, but I still did what I did. I still did what I did. You know? Right. You know? So, yeah, but they will say, you know, oh, man, you need to do your records like this. They need, you know. But, oh, man, you got to you gotta stand on it. So I didn't have that problem. Not, you know. Now, the reason why I asked that question is because I heard, and you can tell me if this is true or not, but I heard that, you know, that the label, I'm assuming, wasn't necessarily behind the first single, uh, Show Enough, when it was coming out during that particular time. Is that true? Uh, so, it was a lot of shit going on, man, with that. Uh, Ball and G didn't really like Show Enough. They, they like Twisted. So, that mm, was the yeah. kickback on that record. They like Twisted, uh, but they got on Show Enough. And I, and, and I thank them to this day. You know what I'm saying? Tony made that happen. Now, what happened when I turned the album in to Tony as a whole, Tony never told me this shit, though. You know, honestly. So if I put it out there, I'm putting it out there wrong. Tony never told me directly that I don't like your album, right? I heard from other people. And I heard from other people he was told to put it out because like nah this shit is dope it ain't you know it is it, it, it's dope and so he put it out you know mm. like that but now he never when i would turn in my music and turn everything into him he never complained about it he never said anything about it and even oh, when okay. now you know i remember one time you know it sat on the shelf for a minute too that album didn't really jump and out the gate and uh i remember it was a little tense 
you know, at times with us. You know, uh, and you know, Drake fly too. Drake would say some fly shit like, man, huh, uh, that shit better sell, you know, some shit like that. You know, he'll say some fly shit every now and then, you know. <laughs> right. So I knew, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you know. And it, it wasn't moving. And then the shit jumped. It jumped. And when it jumped, uh, I think yeah, it was definitely Mean Green uh, that broke, show enough in Houston Street, broke it in Atlanta. And when that shit jumped, man, um, it basically, it, it if it didn't save the company, because the company wasn't fucked up, you know, Swire wasn't fucked up, it, it, it established it. It made it like, all right, yeah, Suave House is shit, yeah. you know. And so uh, we had, you know, and that's, once again, that comes along with the territory. That comes right. along with it. How you feel about the rap game right now as far as from a social media aspect? I know back in the day, a lot more albums used to sell for whatever reasons. You know, I don't, I'm not in the industry to know about the marketing dollars, the logistics and all that stuff behind the push of albums. But just now, um, how social media affects the music game, you know, the pros and cons, like how do you envision it? Like what's your overall thought process towards the hip hop game included with social media now? Man, I like where it is right now. I like where it is too. But you know, it's a swing back. You're gonna have your, um, you know, um, things that you, you know, not pro for, but shit, we have to look at the glass half full, you know? And for me, um, now one thing that I won't do, I won't let it, you know, stress me out, right? Mm. And that ain't yeah. gonna happen. We, I'm, we've, we've, I'm too old for that shit. We passed that. So I'm not gonna let it stress me out. However, you know, I have to admit that, look, to play, and when I mean play to be a, a bleep on the, you know, the radar, you do have to, shit, you got to get busy. You're going to have to have some, you know, and that's good. So if I do bleep on the radar, I know that, okay, shit, I, I ain't fold. I ain't fold. So it has that little bit of, um, you know, a challenge there that it's good for everybody. It's good, right. you know. So I respect it. You know, I respect it is what it is, man. You gonna, you can't complain about how they throw on the rope. Either your ass jumping in or you going to stay what? What you going to do? Right. So right. It, that's kind of, you know, how I look at it. Uh, I, I think, which, and, and I don't want to be just putting words in your mouth, but I think like from um, sonically, how everybody kind of, you know, sound the same. I don't like that yeah. shit. <laughs> no, I don't, I, don't, I don't like that shit, you know. Uh, but still, how I listen and who I am and how my frequency rock, I wind up finding people that don't sound like that. They, you know, they music get to me. But uh, for right. the masses of it, and um, and I still have to tune into radio. I don't listen to it like what I used to. I don't even fucking watch videos the way I used to. Because if you don't do it, that means that, you know, you out the game. You know, you ain't, you know, so I still do it. And um, to add to that, what I do see that pump through video, what I pump through radio was programmed. It all counted. You know, it's the same. So that part, yeah. I, don't, I don't, you know, that part is, you know, weird. But because, you know, like you said, when we came, Pac didn't sound like Big, you know. Snoop didn't sound like Pac. You know, you got a whole group, the uh, dog death row, and nobody sounds the same on death row, right? And, you know, yeah. and how about that? On a whole label, same thing with same to me, same thing with Swap House, same thing with Rap a Lot, same thing with uh, No Limit, same thing with um, even if you go to um, Rockefeller, no one sound alike, and then we're all on the same labels. Now you got right. people on different situations, but y'all all sound alike. Exactly. How yeah. crazy is Super that? crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just like, nah, I'm going to take his exact beat and I'm going to take his exact catering, everything. <laughs> his same title, his same words, 
You know, yeah, that's why I gave in. Now I still say, you know what? I'm I, I, I now that part. I'm like, I'm gonna start just using the words that they're using, because writing back then or putting together, you made sure you ain't, you want to use another nigga word, man. Like we ain't right. even use that word. It, it's dope, but we got to come up with another, uh, you know, other words. All of that, you know. Um, strange, man. Strange now how we, um, you know, we. Um, Huddle everybody up and probably, man, sh- shave it down to about 10 artists, <laughs> you know? That's damn, real, you know? Talk. And you'll be like, damn, you know? We wouldn't even miss a beat. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, that that's some crazy shit because I always wanted to know from an OG, OG perspective from the rap game how you guys viewed it. Because honestly, for me, the way music and everything is right now, microwave, it made me have to listen to the music that I grew up on because honestly, and there's no hate, I'm glad to see people getting their money, doing their thing, taking care of their families. Absolutely. But I just don't see where this music is going to be played 10, 15, 20 years from now. And, you know, and I wonder, are the artists in the labels or the, the putting out the artists, are they even aware of that or if it's just a hustle to them or just one quick lick to them? It's definitely, it's definitely a lick. It's definitely a hustle. And they ain't the only ones, man. I'm sorry. So somebody, kids learn more about osmosis. It ain't from what you tell them. It's what you show them. So mm. they got that shit from somewhere. They got it from these old ad promoters that they ain't really, you know, all you promote now. But you in it for a, a lick. A flip. You ain't in it for the, you know, to make sure the art is good. You're giving good shows to the people. It, you know, it's just like, can I win? You know, that type of thing. Same thing as a label. You know, now, that don't mean that, you know, once again, those promos, those labels are bad. It's just, man, it's life. It's living. It's uh, what they quote unquote call advancing, you know, uh, technology. Shit is faster. It's more things, all that. You know, I we would get an album and we was really able to analyze it. We was able to sit with that album for a couple of weeks before we went. Only only people we could critique it to is the people that we went to school with or that was in the hood, right? Now, yeah. album come out. Motherfucker don't even have to live with it. Get it just like that. Then can go out and 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 goddamn rate it just like that, you know. Yeah. What I'm it's just like everything is so, you know. It, it's just like damn, you know. Um, it it really is microwave. Everything is so microwave, and nobody is cooking and 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 slow roasting and all of that. And and there's some special juices in that shit, you know. Right. And uh, you lose that, but yeah, you you eating fast, you getting to A to B real quick, but you know, you you're losing a lot of things. But you 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 at the party before everybody, because right. you ain't got to go, you ain't got to sit there and wait on it to cook, you know. But you know, so you showing up for everybody, so you getting your ones in, and you leave it with the check first, you know. So it's like you know, I I, I to be popular. To be, you know, that one, you know, I, you know, I just, I, you know, what, what, what is a good analogy for that? Motherfucker, they ain't, ain't work out in the gym. They just jumped on some, some, some roids or whatever. It's like, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm cheating, you know, but, but I'm winning. So in this society, and when you got, quote unquote, what they would call the leaders and, and. And your own, you know, uh, from senators to presidents to to governors, you name it. They are that, and they got that by cheating, by not really, you know, uh, putting in uh, real roots and, and growing it, you know, manipulating the system. And they still get the W. They still drive around in the car and, you know, get the, you know, the house with the, the 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 power and privilege to move across the globe. Hey, why not? They ain't even have to really, you know. So there it is. Now you gotta, you know, yeah. what 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 kid what kid what kid says that that you mean to tell me I can get the same A and I don't have to study? Shit, they gonna go with it <laughs> exactly.
<laughs> so, so I mean, it, somebody showed him that shit, man. With everything you saying right now being a hundred percent, one thousand percent fact, I always question this, and I want to ask you this question. Do you feel like the hip hop game is purposely set up to be a young man's game? And the reason why I ask that is because, say, for instance, you take some a kid, 13, 14, 15, 16, or whatever the case may be, and he comes from a poverty situation. Nine times out of ten, when they put a contract in front of him, where well, that contract more than likely may be fucked up, a 360 deal, or whatever, sign this whole rights away. Nine times out of ten, that kid not going to have a lawyer review it. You know what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten, that kid going to sign it with the quickness, thinking about just trying to put some food on his plate that night compared to someone that's a little bit more seasoned in the game. And then I also look at, I kind of put the correlation between the two with this generation gap. This I feel like it's a constructed generation gap to keep the OGs away from the YGs so the information can be passed back and forth. You know what I mean? Like, like what what's what's your whole thoughts on do you think this is purposely set up this way to be a young man's game absolutely absolutely and uh the part about them you know earning some extra dollars off of it i think that's the minuteness of it i think the deeper crust of it is to uh you know keep keep them you know discombobulated keep them spinning Keep them mm. just, you know, and what way do you really, you know, uh, control through fear and separation? You mm. know, so, yeah. yeah, keep doing that. Keep making it a light skin, dark skin, young, old, short, tall, big ass, small. You know, keep that shit going. You know, that's the, you know, that's the crust of this thing. You know, now on multiple other levels, we benefit, you know? So, yeah, yeah you know, hip hop, definitely this, definitely this. Because yeah, he is, is probably one of the most powerful things on the planet, you know, because they say, man, uh, data is more expensive than oil now. You know, as mm. far as like, you know, and think about fucking data when you really want to get to the bottom. Who is in my my observation, who is really responsible for not, you know, if I mean 40 percent of that, you got to get that shit to hip hop. Right. Uh, our culture, our people, you know, it sets the tone of a, a whole lot. It. I mean, from a sense of how people move, how they dress, how they eat, how they smell, how they, you know, everything comes from that. And a lot of that is who is the conductor of that is hip hop. Yeah. Do you think basketball players would have tattoos if it weren't for hip hop? Do you think no. that, you know, uh, boxers would be coming in the ring, throwing money all over the place if it weren't for hip hop? Do you think mm -hmm. that, you know, you name it, man, you name it, I I will guarantee you. Do you think that they will have our kids so fucking on dead boat when it comes to Fortnite if it weren't for mm -hmm. hip-hop? It's them little dances, them little hip-hop <laughs> dances. <laughs> <It's, it's, laughs> they, they got to deal with it. It's just, oh, okay. So that's 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 King uh that's King Data right there. Yeah, yeah, we can get a ton of information. We get a we get a ton of oh, okay, that's how you feel. That's what you think. That's what you like, you know. That I mean, that's a great thermometer. That's yeah. a great thermometer. So yeah, it's gonna be definitely. Um, but the but the upside, not to be like, oh, oh, okay, this is some some terrible shit. The the upside of it is still you got to have a fight. You got to have a fight somewhere, right? And in this fight, it gives you the opportunity to be a moral being, a being of light. A being of, you know, uh, righteousness. 
it gives you the opportunity. You got to, you know. So we don't want it really removed. We want to just do what you know what's right to fucking do. And sometimes right. it ain't easy for people to do it, you know. And that's the whole, that's the that's the game. That's what it is, you know. But you, you got to, you know, hopefully you stand on some uh, integrity. And hopefully you pick it at the right time. And hopefully you do it to where it's like, you know, you run this race, your marathon, as Nip would say, you know, uh, uh, and, and finish the way that you see yourself finishing. Because everybody, man, ain't, ain't doing any laps the same. Everybody don't see their finish line the same. And that's right. what's more important to me. So if you plan on living a old life and, man, seeing your great-great-grandchildren great and all that, if that's your, per your, your highest purpose, your f first priority, Man, don't challenge that shit. Let that shit do exactly what it did. You know, don't challenge. <laughs> you know, but if you if yo if you see yo you know yo your finish line like nah, I cut my shit at you know at at at, at thirty. I cut my shit at the you know you ain't really chill. Oh yeah, challenge it. Go in and right. play. You know, I just so happen to see mine. You know, I like eighty eight. Eighty eight is a nice number to me. I see 88, so I got to figure out how to, you know, so, you know, uh, it's it's a different way I run, you know? That's deep. That Hey, that's some real shit, because this was the question I was going to ask you, but you just briefly brought up Nipsey Hussle. Um, I wanted to know, like, from OG perspective, you know, since Nipsey's death, a big conversation has launched about being successful and going back to the hood. You know, I want to get your opinion or any advice you know, or or wisdom that you gain throughout the trials and tribulations of being from Memphis, being in the hip hop game, you know, that allowed you to make it to where you at, like mentally sane at this particular point. First of all, you know, we we can at this point, we would never know what Nip thought about it. Now, we all have our. Oh, uh, I want I, w I really hoped he got a chance to get his, you know, smell his roses. I, I I just heard Rose say some shit that was really touching, but see that's from Rose's perspective. The 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 cold part about it is we ain't gonna know where Nip was. We you know, and we won't know that. As you right. know, we can only you know speculate. My thing is what I look at it is like, oh shit! If Nip was there, Nip understood. He may have been one of the ones that, well, you know what? If this means what's going to happen to me, I'm good. He willing to. Yeah. yeah, because he may not, he, he could have been in an energy. And once again, we won't know because he ain't got to, you know, he can't articulate that, or you know, at this point. But I'm going off of how I saw him moving. This, right. this spirit was aware. He's aware. It ain't like, oh, I'm out here. And I'm just, you know, I'm 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 leaned out, I'm 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 uh, I'm uh, Percocet up to where you you know. No, he clear, he clear. Yeah. So he understands this. If I'm to be the sacrifice of this soil to make this grow a certain type, I'm with it. He is certain people that are. We gotta know that. They are just, it's a, they got a different run on the track. Yeah. They got a different run on the track. The man wasn't out there when, when, uh, when that unfortunate in our natural sense shit went on. He went mm. out there on the ground like no coward. Right. He wasn't squirming all under the car and all that, all, 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 peeing himself and all that shit. That wasn't going on. Yeah. So it's something else that's it's just so special. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That man is like I said from what I can gauge, I absolutely believe that he did exactly what he passed through to do. Now I even heard the minister uh who I respect a great deal, honorable uh Minister Louis Farrakhan say that 
you know, Nip didn't get a chance to complete his mission and this, that. I, I You know, for me, I don't believe that. I think Nip, mm. Nip completed his mission. The problem is, if you're going back to the block and you get, you know, uh, naturally, from a physical sense, taken out of this space and you ain't completed your mission, that's when it's a problem. However, with Nip, he was too aware for him not to know. It yeah. makes sense to you? Yeah, yeah, de definitely. I, I get what you're coming from. You know what I mean? I, I feel that same way too, you know, especially looking at it from that perspective that, you know, Nipsey was fully aware of the consequences that could come with him being in that particular area, you know, from his hood, being at the stature that he is. You know, he, he was fully aware of that prior to that day. Now, of course, he may have not wanted it to come like that, but he was aware that it could happen and was willing to take that fall for the greater good. And so, so what can you do with that? That's a perfect using, and I don't believe in death, but that's a perfect death. That's a mm. perfect death. Can you um, elaborate a little bit more on what you mean by um, that you don't believe in death? Oh, we never die. We never die, man. It's Come on now. How do you now you physically, man, physically, you know, what we call physical, but you, ne you never die. If you, you I, I don't know. It may, it, I don't know if that's just me. I don't, I, I don't know if it's, when I say we, it could be you too, but I can't, if a person doesn't feel that, then maybe they do die. But see, I don't, I don't feel that. I really this don't feel that. I don't feel it's like I, I was going on before this. <laughs> I'd be going on after this. Now, just because yeah. I can't remember, but I, it's just a feeling. I can't even explain it. It's just a feeling. It's like, man, this shit, I don't know, but I, I've i been, I I ain't no dog on uh, uh, 40, uh, di uh, this, uh, that, uh, 50, this, or 60. That. It's just like, man, I've always been here. Right. You know, yeah. this feeling. This feeling, like it's I always been, you know, and I know it's something, um, you know, greater than out there, you know. We only getting a glimpse, man. It's just getting a glimpse. But that doesn't mean motherfuckers don't have guidelines and laws. They don't give you the way to just go, you know, wild and out, you know. No, we, 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 it, it's still, it's, uh, it's integrity moves. It's still be the best. It's still, you know, um, even though everything around you is cheating, can you say, no, nah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do. And when I and when I say not cheat, I'm, I'm not saying what they wrote and passed to you, what you feel inside of you, what you right. feel inside of you that ain't, you know, like, no, nah, man. I love our Kelly music, but man, that shit ain't right. You right, know what you right. feel inside of you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's you know, and then you know, and and what ain't even right at it. You know how they, you know, uh, how they mistreated a people right. even more right. But that still, I still have to, you know, uh, reprimand my brother. Still, even though. It's funk ass police over here, da da da. But still, look, man, come on, B. You can't be, you know. I still got to, you know. I still got to hold you accountable, and I hope you hold me accountable. You know, right. man, I saw you, man. I saw you, you know, you weren't treating your woman right, right there, man. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, man, you putting too much on thinking that your woman's supposed to be this, or you know, you, you know, I saw you mishandle, you know, this elder. You know, you you still got to, you know, I you know I see it all the time. I had old, old elders cut off in front of me. Right. And, uh, okay, go ahead. Hey, that's you, cause that's my elder. That's right. my elder. Right. And then now you you think I'm gonna, you know, stand by while you mistreat them? Yeah, you 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 uh, but they come out. Oh yeah, but such such them did them like this. And such that they, they or they doing us like that. That ain't, right. you know, that ain't none of my business. My business is to be upright as much as I can, you know? 
Um, yeah. That's my business. Where did you gain that sense of perspective from, you know, going back off of something you said earlier in the conversation that Jay Prince kind of played a father figure role for you since your father wasn't there? You know, like, where did you gain that perspective about integrity, morals, and principles and stuff like that, you know, being where you're from? Uh, but not having a father figure, you know, did it come from your environment of Memphis, your grandparents or grandmother? My um, my mother, my mother is that. You know, my grandmother too. <laughs> my grandma, my my grandmother, uh, you know, as she shined on well. Uh, my grandmother was. Oh man, that is my huh. If I could say uh, what we would call what you know, because we're all guys, but you know what I'm talking about. If I could say. A, yeah. a tangible God, that was my grandmother. Yeah. My grandmother. That's what that was, that's what she was in that sense. However, because she didn't she had a way of not man, she had this beautiful way of not judging. I ain't never mm. seen nothing like it, man. You could be whatever you you still you sweet to me. I don't care yeah. what you out there. She just had that thing about her, man, you know. Um, my mom was more of the uh, straight lace. My mom real straight lace. So I, I think I found a balance in between all that, you know. So I, I found the balance of shit. Yeah, I'm a steal that goddamn. Uh, I'm a I'm a vegan, right? I'm just saying this. I'm giving you a, a paint you a picture. I'm a vegan. And I'm starving. Shit, yeah, I'm finna go in there and steal that sirloin and eat it like a motherfucker, right? Because I ain't mm. got no money, right? But right. now, it's another part of me, too, like, well, look, you arrived, you're doing all right, and you're not in those positions. Don't do that type of shit. You feel me? Right. So right. I, I'm that. I'm that. I ain't the one, like, I'm starving around here. If you in a situation, I ain't gonna tell you, you know, cut your own wrist. I get mm. it, you know. Do what you gotta do. You know, yeah. now, but now, I am gonna pull your coat when you like, man, you still out here talking about you moving keys and bricks and all this shit, and you sitting on fucking 20 mil? Man, stop mm. it already. Hey, I feel you for real, for real. I'll be peeping that shit all through the game. That's what make it hard to believe what's real and what's not real, even though it's a crazy thing if it is real to be putting it out there on front street like that, but it's ridiculous. Come on, man. Yeah, Word. yeah man. As you know, so if you, you know, like I said, I get it to a point, you know, I get it, you know, but then it, it's, it's it, it, at certain points too, everybody has to grow up. And put those childish toys down, you know, and say, you know what, I, I've uh, I've accomplished. I'm here now, and and that's why it's certain individuals. I, you know, I mean, I salute and I, I full on respect because it's like, man, they doing it the way that I strive and uh, inspire me to do, you know, to where it's like, you know, they reach that point. Man, why do I? I, I don't have to do that anymore. To prove this and that or to be like, you know, and, you know, um, not even if it's just a proof thing, but just a, a, a moral thing, a righteous thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, uh, yeah, I get it when you're young and you're running through them. You need that. You got to. You got to have about 90 of them you knocking down. I get it. But when you get yeah. older, man, now this woman, she by your and that's what you do. You still come on, man. Come on, man. Right, yeah. That's silly, man. I just, you know, it's time just to prove to people or whoever around you or to yourself that you can, you know, uh, still knock it down. No, nah, man. Come on, that ain't growth, and that ain't being, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a man to me. You know. Mm. So yeah. yeah, man. It's crazy that you say that because just I think it was last night or night before last, I was just having a conversation with one of my homies and we was talking about that. And it came from a question, um, but we was talking about that, you know, men and relationships and different things of that nature. And a young lady, I believe she's from New York or whatever, had left a question where she's abstinent or celibate, you know, living a life of celibacy, one of the two, but she wanted to know what type of advice would a man give her even though you know like she still wants to date and it was crazy because you know on one hand we gave her some good advice as far as 
um, you know, finding a man that mirror her type of lifestyle and that's down with it. And on the opposite side, I basically was like, you know, in these days and times, you know, you might have to give a man a full hall pass to go out there and do that because you're not going to really run across too many men that's just going to date you and be with you for months and years and years and not going to have sex. Like a man have some form of sexual needs. With all that being said, like what type of advice would you give to her? Don't date men. <laughs> Shit. What the hell? What the hell you think this is? You know. Now I'm I'm a realist in that sense. Look, if you're going to date a man, right? Understand it's natural for a man to have sex. Because if he now the only thing that I could probably tell her that may lean the tables her way, if if you have to find a man with a totally feminine polar. But even if he does have a feminine, feminine polar, he gonna want you to be that masculine polar because even that feminine polar naturally has to have sex. Mm. So I think what she's doing is something that she got to do with herself anyway. Because if you, and we tend to do this, you like, especially, you know, a woman can be, uh, I don't want to put that on, but can be doing, you know, doing the most. Or just, you know, living, you know, and then all of a sudden, I'm shutting down. Because they yeah. you know, so understand really what's happening here. Just because you may have, you didn't get the full understanding of, um, yeah, uh, well, we can't say that with oxygen, or whatever. Yeah, let's say you were just taking in a ton of air or whatever. Messing up your lung. Now that you understand oxygen and how this thing works, it don't mean you stop breathing. You just utilize it in its natural way. You know? And yeah. so if you're going to date a man, and, and I'm talking to a woman. Now, if, if, right. if they got to understand that part. We don't naturally operate the way that they do in that area. Now, if she's cool with him having sex with other people or whatever, she should might was just gone, which she's not going to be because honestly, her emotions don't run that way. So on right. the natural sense, let's get you fixed in whatever ever area you think that sex is a broken part of you know your relationship. Wait a minute now. Sex ain't did nothing wrong to mo <laughs> make love ain't did no <laughs> wrong to nobody. Where was right. you? Where was your head space at? That's yeah. what it is. So we got to get your head right, and right. then you'll let love making be what it is a beautiful thing. God damn it, you should do it all the time, every day. If you're in that love space, you can actually. Be in the love space, and the other person don't even have to be, because that's right. that agape love. It overrules that they could be on just some freak shit getting there. But if you're in that love space, you gonna transmit the right energy. But see, the love space is, I ain't, I ain't giving them this ass to, to, uh, to trap them. I ain't giving them this ass to get an outfit. I ain't giving them this ass to manipulate attention. See, you got to know what it's all about. See, if they're right. going in with all that, then guess what? As I'm talking as a chick. You going with your motives. So any type of motives that are there instead of the motives of pure love, then guess what? is okay we got to get your head fixed first before anything for real for real and, and you know before we wrap up this interview you know one of the last questions i want to ask you you know we in 2019 we got all type of cancel movements all type of women movements you know uh i want to know with your back catalog and re your resurgence up to today you know do that affect your style do that affect the things that you say or want to say like and make you second guess things that you want to put in your music before putting it out, knowing that, you know, with social media and, you know, halfway in real life that people are so sensitive about everything that a person says in their music. You know, to a point, 
to a point. Uh, what the Me Too movement, and I and I'm I'm gonna think about it. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it from their perspective. I'm gonna take it from mine, and I'm gonna live with it and bounce it back. What I'm at now with is I I I have chose to make sure that I'm doing things that are you know musically that I am not um long as I'm not be insulting. That's what I was looking <clears> for. I'm doing music now. When it comes to women, I'm not going to be insulting. But now. That's as far as I go. That's all. That's that's where I'm at with this whole thing. That's where I draw my line, and maybe one day it'll get a little bit, you know, uh, in others' favor or what's comfortable for them. I'm not trying to make nobody really comfortable, but I ain't trying to make you uncomfortable neither. You know, I gotta deliver the message the way I get it. Now yeah. I do know I, I I am skillful enough not to insult you. You know what I'm saying? So I. I, that's what that movement has brought out of me, you know. I was never that person anyway that didn't want. I mean, that wanted something that didn't want me, and to you know. So it's only so much I could sign up for it because I'm really not. I have empathy, but I haven't had an experience in it. You know, I don't touch on no. I don't touch on nobody that don't want me touching on them. I don't. Right. Uh, fi I don't power play. You know, somebody in something, to getting them to do something that they don't want to do. I don't really get no, um, I don't get no, uh, no trophies out of that. Really, I, I, my, right. my thrills and rocks is that, you know, that person is getting off as well. You know, and when I mean, I'm just saying, I'm speaking in life. You know, yeah. you know, like. Uh, if I've been, you know, once again, I had to force you or I had to twist you on, you, you know, but we got to got it. Done. I, I, really, you know, I ain't a bully. I ain't right, never been right. that. I ain't never been that. So yeah, yeah, you know, just like you were saying earlier, how hip hop has influenced the world, and I even noticed even with the correlation between hip hop influence and the comedy world, and I say that to say because. I've even noticed in the comedy world, all these different movements out here have damn near killed the comedy world, to my opinion, because there's so many people that's sensitive and get offended by everything. You know, I wonder, like, before you go to the lab and not to say that you are demeaning or your music or anything ever been demeaning or artists is in general, but just wondering, do it affect that process? We're like, damn, I can't even say what I want to say because people may get offended. No, I'm, I'm sure they do. Yeah, you got people that do, man.
music, they just don't have a team in position to help them do their rollouts properly. You know, whatever it may be. You know, so um, those unique situations, man. You know, uh, that's that's our you know our goal. And um, and right now we we um, we don't have uh, we have like a couple of artists that are younger. Uh, but for the most part, we we still in building mode. We're still in building mode. We're over here at No Offense Podcast, man. We greatly appreciate your time. You coming to sit down and wrap it up with us about a little bit of everything, man. We, you know, uh, for everybody that's listening and tuning in right now, make sure you go follow Tila at Tila Official, right? Yep, Tila Official. Any last things that you want to say and put out there on the floor for the people and the fans and supporters and listeners to know? Man, Doc, man, uh, I appreciate you opening up the line for me, you know, opening up the, uh, the, uh, the whole, you, you turned me on to something over here, so I had to go and download my app and get all that, you know, so this is my <laughs> first so, so you turning me on, I appreciate that, man. But for the most part, man, uh, collectively hey hey let's take care of one another out there you know love on each other a little bit more look at the glass half full and half empty man and live you know live and enjoy what else can i say